I would love to bring Teofimo Lopez to Manchester as well and give him a good ass kicking. I would love to see that, and Jack can do it. Damn! You just gonna let the UK bruv call you out like that? You ain't gonna say nothing? You know what we say about people like that where I'm from. Tell him, Geechee. Nigga, you was a bitch! If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm boasting. But if I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Yo, what's good, Boxing Talk family? It's your boy, Dr. PGNG. I'm praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I don't know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So we're here to talk about old Jack Catterall versus Regis Progay, that fight that transpired this weekend. And boy, was it a good one. I know some people were a little disappointed, especially if you're pulling for old Ruguru. Man, shout out to Ruguru, man. I thought it was a great fight. You know, they even exchanged knockdowns throughout the course of the fight. You know, Regis, Ruguru, Pro Gray knocking down Jack Catterall in the fifth round. You know, he knocked him down the fifth round. But if you were watching, you know, it was more of like a, you know, lack of balance thing, but lack of stability. But what caused that instability was definitely a punch from Ruguru. So more, more so like a flash knockdown. I wouldn't really say Jack Catterall was hurt. But by the time that ninth round came around, Jack Catterall definitely hurt Regis Ruguru Pro Gray. He dropped him twice, you know, twice for a 10-7 round, man. So I thought Jack Catterall definitely demonstrated uh his boxing acumen he definitely showcased his skills and you know i think this definitely opted uh, up this stock you know and i think this really 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 put him in a situation in a position to demand a title shot notice how i said demand you know because before when he uh fought josh taylor he was like yeah i want a royal title shot next and he called out teofimo lopez well not only did he call him out again but even eddie hearn doubled down and say hey man jack catterall needs a title shot i guess teofimo saying that hey, we'll even bring you to england or we'll travel to 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 new to, to new york you know what i'm saying the big apple you know and and put down a big ass whooping now do i think that jack catterall could beat teofimo i actually do and um even even before when he first called him out i thought this was a great fight um is it is it a shoe in is it like impossible for teofimo to win no he's a champion you know what i'm saying i think it would be a good fight but i i would lean towards jack catterall before and then after his uh his um performance against ruguru i definitely would lean towards him even more and especially because you know at, at, at 140 teofimo's power doesn't seem to translate there and then not only that you know uh he's been focusing on calling out people below his weight class like Javante Tank Davis or yeah. people above his weight class like Terrence Bud Crawford yeah. and it just doesn't even seem like he realistically wants a fight in his division with any of the contenders or champions at 140 and I think that's a, a, a telltale sign that he don't really want the smoke you know what I'm saying he's really just wolfing you know like he usually does and not to mention he's been saying some pretty inappropriate and, and and outright racist things towards people of certain communities you know what i'm saying so i'm not really fond of to fimo in the in, in the first place so i think i would love to see anybody kick his ass but i think that jack carroll definitely has a good chance of of, of whooping him you know what i'm saying and i think that um it'll, it'll be a good fight though competitive competitively speaking and um sticking in the realm of boxing i think that would be a good fight and i could see a path of victory for to fimo but i could definitely see a path of victory for jack catterall as well man and and even if you we don't get that fight next because Teofimo is is infamously going through some uh, uh, contractual disputes with uh, Bob Barham and Top Rank. You know, they're currently going through some litigation. Uh, we won't see him to uh, until next year. We won't see him for the rest of this year until next year. Well, we could potentially get uh, Jack Catterall, Elgato versus Liam Paro and Richardson Hitches are the winner of that fight. So I think Catterall versus Hitches, I think that's a good fight. Let's say Hitches wins. Uh, I don't know who I would lean to, man. I think right now, like I said, off this performance, maybe I'm a prisoner of the moment, but I'll lean towards Catterall slightly uh, having the advantage over Hitches. Now, if Liam Paul wins, man, that's tough because Liam Paul coming off of a win against Super Matias in his back, yard of puerto rico that was a spectacular win that we called by the way you know what i'm saying yes we did you know and he was going in as an underdog and i think that's a really intriguing matchup but like i said i think that i don't know how that would go to be honest i'll have to do more research and you know study their styles styles a little more but stylistically right now i think jack catterall is a slicker boxer and he got, he's capable of outpointing Liam Paul, but I think Liam Paul's aggression, and he's he's just a good all overall all around boxer, you know. And I think that his aggression and uh, and his pace could kind of take over towards the end. So I don't know who wins that one, man. It's still up in the air for me. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. I think 140 uh, is getting a little situated, you know. That 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 the, the title holders could change, you know, <laughs> at any given moment, you know. With Teofimo's being the champion at 140 with the most longevity, but we see we seen. Uh, 
things change a lot, you know. So we'll see how that goes. Now Regis Progre, you know, saying shout out to him. He's a warrior, always fought all comers. There's no shame in him losing, you know. He only lost to good people. We lost to what? Josh Taylor, uh Devin Haney, and now Jack Catterall with him and Devin Haney. Uh with his loss to Devin Haney being back to back now with Devin Haney and then losing to Jack Catterall. So that's not really a good sign. But you know, there's no shame in losing to those those gentlemen. You know, I wonder what he's gonna do next. He gave us a hint even when he was talking about fighting Devin Haney. You know, if you listen closely, he was already considering potentially going to MMA. And now he's talking about bare knuckle fighting. And I always thought that was a little little a little a little warning sign because whenever you're discussing what you're gonna do afterwards when you have a fight coming up i always think take that as like a red flag i'm like oh i don't know man i don't know how much his heart is really into it right now and we saw jack Catterall come up top, come up come out on top but he put on a great performance and so did ruguru so you know i, I, I wish ruguru uh the best and he said what he's gonna do you know check him out right here i've been wanting to do bare knuckle for a long time that's something i, I really want to do excuse me um I stayed at 140 for a long time, so maybe it might be time to go up to 147. So as you can see, he's he, he's he's contemplating retirement from boxing. He's contemplating going to 147. He's also contemplating going to bare knuckle fighting. So whatever he does, man, I'm sure he'll be great. He's a champion. Once you're a champion, you're always a champion in my eyes. And shout out to Ruguru, man. Whether we, do, we whether we see him next in a boxing ring against Josh Taylor at 147, or we see him return at 140, or we see him at, at bare knuckle fighting championship. But Everybody know, excuse me, I changed my mind every three seconds, so I might say something tomorrow. I'm going back at 140. It depends. We'll see. You know, whatever it do, whatever case it may be, man, shout out to Ruguru. He had a great career regardless, and I, I'm excited to see his next move because I'm definitely going to be up to watch it, you know, whether it's in the box stream or otherwise. So y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the, in, in the comments. Man, shout out to uh, Jack Catterall for winning a, a very great fight, and he definitely uh, 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 stepped up his game against Ruguru, man. So shout out to him, and I'm looking forward to see what he does next. I, what I would like to see, I would like to see him versus Teofi. Fimo, but I wouldn't mind seeing him versus the winner of Paro and Hitchens as well. So however it goes, man, I'm ready for it, man. I want to see it. So I appreciate y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it. How do you think Jack Adderall would do against Teofimo? How do you think he'll do against the winner of Paro and Hitchens? And what would you, what, which route would you prefer him take? Like I said, I would rather him go against Teofimo because even though that'd be next year, that'd give Jack Catterall some time to uh, rest up from his from his last fight with Regis, Ru Pro Regis Ruguru Progre, his most recent fight. And then Teofimo, he should be available next year because he doesn't have a fight at all either. But if the Amparo and Hitchens, they have a fight, depends on how that goes. We may want to see a rematch or, you know, they might be out a substantial amount of time if, if one or both of them sustain some, you know, some significant injuries from a from a tough back and forth fight. So let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button. But most importantly, remember, with God, we can do anything without God, we're nothing. The doctor's out. Peace. From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.